Welcome to episode 74 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Taxes. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local libertarian city council candidate, Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision that I do when it comes to communicating liberty. That is, prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how we view taxes. With that, let's dive right in. All right, welcome back. So again, it's Tub and I, and we are here to talk libertarians on 25 issues. The issue this week is taxes. It's everybody's favorite issue. Remember, we're going through the book uh, "Libertarian um, uh, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. And in chapter three, he briefly talks about 25 issues and where libertarians stand. And so we decided that for this season, what we would do is go through each one of those 25 and talk about them uh, at a, you know, a little bit more in depth. And then the idea being that when you listen, whether you're libertarian um, or not, if you're a libertarian, then you would be able to uh, maybe, maybe pick up some ideas on how you could communicate to your non-libertarian friends. And if you're non-libertarian, then hopefully by the time that this is over, you'll understand why we take the positions that we do on matters such as taxes and what the two that we've done before, which were healthcare and and maybe if they're smart, if they won't just take it off of us of what we maybe they can go right. to some really smart people and go oh here's, I mean, the, here's maybe, somebody who did maybe, this much but better. Until, but until you we're find those smart the people, the premise of it, the basics right, of right, it, right. and then you go from there. Right. Okay. If you can't find those smart people, then we'll we'll do in the time. Fall back on <laughs> us, right? So let's go ahead and read what it says, and we'll put it up on the screen here. But what's what does that chapter say? And each each item only gets like a paragraph. So here's what it says: Libertarians would eliminate taxes or lower taxes as much as possible, and we'd cut spending as well by reducing services and eliminating programs. Plenty of studies show countries with lower taxation have better overall economies than countries with higher taxation. Which is greedier? to keep your own money or to want to take someone else's through taxation. So that's what it says. Now I want to kind of prime this conversation. When you own yourself, and that's a big theme for me, self-ownership. When you own yourself, that means that you own the things that you do. So if you go out and you work in the garden, you own that work. That's your labor. And the results of that labor as well. So any fruit or any vegetables, you own that, right? Uh, not in my case, because there's nothing to own after my labor. It's just labor. It's just labor. <laughs> right. It's... right. And taxes forcibly take you from uh, take away from you what you've earned through a mutual contract with another party and either use it for purposes that you disagree with or worse, they give it to someone else. Where you might normally make your own decision regarding your resources and how you associate with others, taxes effectively impose a contract with others causing strained social uh, they, they impose on the contract with others which causes strained social relationships so it, let's where are we going that, with this? that's that to me what you're saying there that's the power of the gun the government owns right. the gun they're deciding hey we're going to take this from you and you don't have to like it you're just going to do it right now i i, I do want to kind of preface this a little bit in that i always say that um i don't think we have a tax problem we have a spending problem okay okay because i think that we we spend entirely too much but that you have to recoup that money well 
technically recoup that money from somewhere. Okay. And so that's why I think that that's why you see elevated taxes. It's not because they want to tax all these things. It's because they want to spend all of this over here. Right. It's the same way normal people inside their life, they go, hey, I want to go buy these things. So I would have to go maybe work more hours or right. sell another product or whatever that happens to be. Government doesn't produce anything. Right. So the only thing they can do now is steal at a higher level. Right. So like I said, I think that if we can cut back the spending, I think that cuts us back to what we have to have with taxes. Okay. Okay. Um, now I, I will tell you I don't know we we had the so conversation. One, a yeah. reduction in one leads to a reduction in the yes, other. Yes, that's the way I see. Okay. It. Yes. Okay. okay. So you're not what you're not saying is because it almost sounds like uh oh by saying we're not we don't have a problem with taxes with ta- with taxation mm-hmm. it almost could be interpreted as like oh the level of taxation isn't the problem it's the level of spending which kind of says okay which that's off the other right yeah and so what you're saying is because the reason that the taxation is so high which it shouldn't be it shouldn't be exactly I got you. Okay. yeah 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 because like i said if we're not spending this much we don't need to gather this right. much right. and so that's what it is if we can get control of our spending we wouldn't need as much to come in right. that's where you can easily then start cutting back the taxes now right. I, I will tell you that maybe in some ways i, I I shouldn't even say I strip from libertarians because I think that we all kind of camp out in different areas. I, I'm not against certain taxes, right. uh, I, but I like the idea, and maybe we'll get into it a little bit, is us deciding mm-hmm. where we should put our money and what's the okay. best use of our money through taxes, even if you want to call it that way. Um, like I put a thing up on Facebook a little while back. I said, hey, if you could choose. And I, said, and I was, oh my goodness. Okay, so I was very cautious. <clears throat> and libertarians, I understand where we all stand about taxes, that we'd right. rather have none. Let us choose. I, we're probably going to cover that because I don't know what you have for your notes but i did say i said listen if you had a like if you could choose right. where your tax money went right and people then started libertarians naturally they chime in oh, it's all theft you're right i agree with you but right. right but let's be realistic right now like we have this preferred world but this is what we're dealing with today right and so just kind of asking people and it seemed like there, there's a number of responses that came and you gotta also understand that like on my social media, which is just Facebook, because I'd rather have none of it. Um, while libertarians do take up a certain amount, I have a lot of non-libertarian people on there. Right. Okay. And um, so everybody kind of started answering honestly, and it truly came up with um, roads. Mm-hmm. I, I know. Um, right. Roads. Always and, is roads. Yes, it's always roads. And emergency services. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that people are kind of like, this is where. And, and I like that because it shows where people right. are. And it shows, right. okay, well, if we had a choice, here's what we would right. do with them. Right. You know, it's funny that it's long been lamented in the libertarian community that the first thing that people want to say is, well, what about roads? What about police? What about fire department? What Mm -hmm. about, you know, ambulances? Um, What about all these, you know, particular services? What about, you know, I don't know, the Coast Guard or somebody coming to rescue you when you need need to be rescued? And so I look at it, you know, and one of the things that I think that libertarians miss this opportunity is to say, okay, because, you know, Again, what libertarians want is like maybe no taxes mm-hmm. or virtually none, depending on what that's, flavor you that's are. That's right? I kind of keep out it. But, mm-hmm. I, but I, think, I think there's an opportunity that's been missed repeatedly, and that's to say, okay, I'll give that to you. Would you be okay with a world where the only taxation was for the explicit purposes of those things? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, because, and, and the reason I say that, and, and, the reason, and, I, and I think, one, it challenges people. Because are they just throwing out something right. dramatic to try to, to win the conversation, the, yeah. or do they really believe that? Let's 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 push them and find out, right? Because mm-hmm. we need to figure out where people really are. Right. We can't address somebody's issue if we don't know where they what, really what are. Their issue is, and uh-huh. if, if they're just throwing something out because that's going to give them the the win in the conversation, then we're spinning our wheels from the very beginning. Right. We need to stop spinning our wheels and say, all right, where do you really stand? Would you be okay with removing this or this or this or that? Right. And if they are, then get them on board with that, because then we can start having a conversation of, well, let's how do we remove these things? Right. Right. <clears throat> but then also, I think that the uh, that part of the issue is is that we um, we know that it's it's a divisive topic. The taxes are OK. And um, it, it opens the door to being able to discuss how we would um, how we would resolve some issues. For instance, we don't have to necessarily start with how are we going to deal with a lack of military? How are we going to deal with a lack of police or lack of firefighters, right? Like we don't have to necess- necessarily start there. But if we can if we can use that opportunity to get That's, people right. to, then we can start talking about the say, conversation. We, we can start and, have a conversation uh, about, mm-hmm. okay, so you want to remove this social safety net. 
Well, the biggest reason that I found that people don't want to remove these is because they don't want to feel bad uh, about somebody else losing or in some way not having. Like, well, give me an example of like what you're thinking. So let's say we let's say we cut, cut welfare. Okay. All right. Right. And a lot of people will be like, well, what happens when you fall on hard times? Because I've had that conversation. People have been like, well, would you want to fall on hard times? Would you want to have nothing? And I think that's the problem is we're not really addressing this idea that there won't necessarily be nothing. Because once we start – because, again, we talked about this in the free market episode, mm-hmm. right, where a lot of the things that we would remove from government – this is if you're non-libertarian, you really need to pay attention to this part. If <laughs> a lot of the things that we would remove – from the government's hands would not necessarily just go away. No. They would simply shift hands to some other mechanism that would be driving it, that we believe would actually um, drive it in a more appropriate and more effective manner. Now, on those lines, <clears throat> here's what I've often said. I said, okay, let's be honest at the Democrat Party, the liberals, they try to implement a number of things to take care of people. Right. And as a pastor and you know, leading a church, I often say, you know what? I says, here's what happens. If the church was actually being the church, the government wouldn't have to do those things. Right. So, but here's what I found that inside of circles, inside, like you have your areas, a lot of people are willing to either, if hard times come, I got to work harder. Right. Here's what happens. Unfortunately, that once you tell them, no, you don't, you don't have to go work harder and make something of you right. and during this time. We'll take care of you. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't motivate them. Right. To get into that. So guess right. what happens as that starts building? The hardest thing about this is taking those things away from somebody. Right. Like who's going to be the party? Now, I think right. this is where libertarians say, I don't care. We'll be the party. Right. Where libertarians, because neither one of the major two are going to take that away. Right. Once you've given it to them, you become the bad guy if you try to take it away. Right. So, but to our point though, is I've truly seen where, you know what, even if people fall on hard times, as we put it, Mm -hmm. there are other mechanisms in place that things start kicking in. There are charitable organizations that will help during those times. Um, There is community. Right. You you know, um, like... And I think that's what we lose when we defer things to the government. And it's very interesting because the same people that want government to do it, they want a better society. And I'm like, well, is it really a better society? When government's doing it versus insisting that Pastor Tub helps me out on a hard time when I'm having a hard time, like mm-hmm. maybe maybe you have a job opening, you know, maybe it's you know may, it may not be great, but maybe I lose my job and then I end up coming to work for you, um, which is better than starving, right? And there's the difference. And uh-huh. I develop a relationship with you, so now two people in the community now have increased the value of. A community. And, 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 and you know what's funny? Okay, so so my, my wife does a, a, a pretty, I don't want to say big, it's a smaller scale of helping the homeless, their okay. day-to-day needs that she does downtown here. And so I, by default, I kind of know a number of the guys are all part of it. So this morning I was dropping her off at work, which is a whole other story. So I was dropping her off and I pulled off to the side a little bit because so I was trying to figure right. out I was going to go breakfast because you decided to hold off today's recording. So right. I was like, I'm going to go eat first. So right. I'm sitting there and one of the guys comes up, kind of comes up to my, anyway, I talk, I'm standing there talking to him. I'm like, hey, why aren't you at work? Because usually he's working and stuff like that. And he goes, oh, you know, and he explained to me what's going on. I said, okay. And so, like, here's the thing. I gave him a few dollars. Go get something to eat. Right. Okay. Once again, and and, and as I put it, I said, said, I'll help you because you help my wife. Right. That's kind of, listen, in all honesty, that's how society will kind of work. Right. Well, you've done this for me. So he even asked, like, I I love that the first thing he asked, he goes, hey, do you have anything I can do to make a few bucks like, I love that attitude. Right, I, I, right. Like, you know what I loved is it wasn't his first reaction to go, where do I go get my free handout from the government? Like, right. I love that thinking. Right. And when you don't have that thinking, I'm like, yes, let's in, let's encourage that. Right. And so I think that this is how communities start helping other people out right. of the community. When they go, hey, let me do this for you. We talked about this with the barter systems. I think we right. probably covered the barter system a little bit. Uh, but, a little bit in the free market. Right. And, and so I, I love the concept of that. So the thing is, is that as we can start pulling government out of those things we we don't have to assume that only government's going to do these things um before government got into the business of handing out free money um what did people do they did just that they found extra work right um they they go to family members and ask for help or whatever it happened to be during time they sleep on somebody's couch for a while you know they do all of these type of things instead of well, who's going to do it for me? Right. We've defaulted, unfortunately, right. to the government. And 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 I think what people fail to realize is that when you default it to the government, you create situations that may not really be all that better than some of the things that you don't like about the open market mm-hmm. doing it, right? So one of the big – in your pastor, and so I've, we've seen this a lot. I remember it happening all the time. 
people would get upset because they would say, well, you know, this church is handing out food, but you have to sit through a sermon first in order mm -hmm. to get the right. food, you know, or there would be some stipulation for somebody to help you. Right. And so, so people don't like that. Mm -hmm. And, and I can understand that. I can right. get it. Like if you're a hardcore atheist and you're down on your luck, you know, Dude, just feed me. Right. You just, <laughs> you, want, you just want some breakfast, uh -huh. right. Or some, you know, some lunch or what have you. And so I can understand that. On the other hand, though, all we're doing is we're just moving around pieces on the same board because you go to the government. And I'm going to tell you a story. This, this happened to me, and it really bothered me, and it sticks with me. So when I was in my early 20s, I was a youth director at the church. Mm -hmm. That's not the part that really bothers me. Okay. Okay? <laughs> just so you know. It's the part that you said I used to be. It's the part right, that really right. bothers me. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so I worked with kids that were uh, from the wrong side of the tracks, basically. Okay. Like some of these teenage boys were like on their second strike. Some of them knew all the officers on the police force. Like they were right on the edge of, you know, being shipped off. Yeah, to if you juvie. lived in my town, you'd have my brother in that right. group. <laughs> so um, I remember I was working with one of the with, with this uh, with, with one guy uh, and his family members, mostly him, and he had like four or five brothers and sisters. I think it was like five. I think there was five of them all together, mm -hmm. and he wanted to start saving up money so that he could have his own apartment. Okay. Now, at that time, I don't know what it's like these days, but at that time, you saved up the first month and last month's rent. Right. And then you made sure that you had a steady job. Mm -hmm. And then you went out and you found yourself an apartment that um, that fit your your economic needs. Yep. Or your, that you could afford. And um, so I had, a, uh, I had a, a bank account at this credit union. And he didn't have a bank account. His family, I don't even know if his family had a bank account. Right. Or they they might have had something super duper simple, but there was nothing really to work with. Right. So I went to my credit union and I said, hey, I would like to open up a bank account or an account with this guy and help him out. And here's what I'm doing. Now, the credit union, the way that they were structured at the time, this particular one, you either had to work at a company that banked with them or have a family member that banked with them in order to become a member. Okay. Right. It's so like that a was a credit union. Right. That's I, I, kind I, of work. Okay. Is that okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I've only had like one or two. a lot of them worked back then. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. I, I didn't. I, back then, I just kind of worked my, you know, I was yeah. kind of very tunnel vision. So, um, so I, I, I take him there and I'm like, this is what we're doing. And they were like, oh, wow. And I knew that it, he didn't fit the criteria of becoming a member. Right. And they said, we can make an exception for that. We like the goal that you're trying to accomplish here. We appreciate Because I, what, what I want to do is get him a bank account uh -huh. and get him money in it, save up money, and then show him how to use the checkbook re uh, register. So for some of my younger younger listeners who may not know what that is, is. <laughs> a checkbook <laughs> was this thing that had paper in it. And as long as you had checks, you had money. No, I'm just that, 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 You know, that, 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 that was the belief. Wait a minute, I'm so, not done yet. Like, I got money, uh -huh. I got checks. Right? But but they always came with this register, and then you could record all of your transactions. And it was basically like a little mini ledger. And so I wanted to teach him how to record every transaction that he made so that he would be able to open it up and look and say, I look, have look this much done. money, mm -hmm. right? And, oh, wow, look at this. I'm buying a lot of sodas or whatever. I don't right. you know, whatever it is that he's yep. buying, right? And... um. So we were good to go there. I was excited, and then um, I don't. One of the ladies in our church was a social worker, um, and she had mentioned. She said, "You may want to be careful, because the, and, I, and I might get this wrong, but it was something along this line. The family, in totality, had a certain amount of money that they could have in savings. Before and if they exceeded that amount, they would lose whatever assistance that they had. Yep, <clears throat> and." The way that, and I don't remember the numbers now, but I remember taking a look at it and the amount that he would have needed to save up for first and last month rent so he could move out so on his own. So he could better himself and not be pulling off of government. Uh -huh. would have kicked his entire family off of welfare, right? And here's the problem. Once he moves out. It's fine again. Right? right? Like they would, like, well, once he moves out, the family would still need assistance. Their help, yes. Right? Just hopefully he wouldn't. Right. And we would have gotten one person off of this generational poverty. But the limitation. So so while people complain and say, well, this there's we, a there's a limitation in order to get free food, there's also a limitation when it comes to government. Now, it, it's not an unreasonable one to say, look, we don't want you having piles of money while you're on assistance. I get, get that. that. Uh -huh. But there was no other mechanism that I was aware of that, that anybody but, could tell me about to help this guy 
get out of poverty without endangering his family. There's the point, though. And right there is the bigger problem, is that government is not truly there to empower the right. people. The government right. is there to empower the government. Right. And so the more that they can keep... Even if passively. Uh, y yes, and, th and this is passively, really. Right. But the, the, here's, the, here's the problem, though. The more that we can say, I'm supplying for you and I'm doing these right. things, well, guess what? The more that they do that and the less that they empower people, the more money they got to bring right. back in. Which goes back into, we don't have a tax problem, we have a spending problem. Right, right. So if they could cut back all of these things, let government step out of the role of Big Daddy, and right. instead, you know, say like, like right. you know what, do your role, do what you're called to, right. and, and let the people and empower yeah. the people. And yep. you were just trying to empower somebody to get Absolutely. off of that government hold. Yeah. Look what we can do. And the government hold through money. Right. Keeps holding and pulling right. them back. But once again, how does government get money? Right. They take it. And none of it was really, to my knowledge, malicious. Right? Like nobody's like, ah, ha, ha, we're going to keep these people poor. I, I don't think so. I mean, maybe, but not to my knowledge. Right? I, right. To my knowledge, somebody, some bureaucrat said, we need to do this because these people are in hard times and we got to do this. And then some other bureaucrat said, well, we can't just be giving out money. We got to have some some limitations on it. And neither one of them sat down and said, by the way, what happens when people want to get off and then how, these limitations we, not prevent them? Like, like, that's that was not never a concern. The concern. That was never the concern. You know? and, and I think that, that that's why, and maybe we're jumping ahead through topics or something. No, no. That, no. That, that, that I think that with too much government assistance, mm -hmm. we run into problems and right. people become stuck to government. Right. They're dependent on government. Right. And once again... This does lead back to what we're talking about is the fact that government and taxes, it's high, not because of the things that they have to be paying for, not the essentials that people are willing to say, right. emergency and roads and stuff along right. those lines. If it was just that, you know how low our tax base would be right. if it was just the simplicity of this is what we pay for. Right. Okay. They don't do that. They want to do all these other programs, right. which causes everything to go crazy. Right. Now, we're seeing it here in town with a billionaire football team, mm -hmm. a football team owner with businesses that they're trying to get into town. They're, oh, we'll give them money. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. Because right. every time you give that to them, you're taking it from somebody else. Right. And the problem is that you're taking it from just the normal people of yeah. life. Right. So let me ask you this real quick, because I say this because this was a, a big kind of conduit to me becoming a libertarian. And now you figure I've been a registered libertarian for about 16 years now. Wow. OK, like I've been in, I've been in for a while. Longer but, than me. But, but You're I, more but, of a libertarian than I yes, am. Yes, I am. But I've, I felt that for a long wow. time. So, uh, <laughs> but no, but what, I, but what I'm saying, though, is I was a typical libertarian and that I'm a libertarian. I want all these freedoms, but I'm not going to do anything. Right. Like, I'm not gonna, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sit around and complain. I mean, I was crushing libertarianism as far as that goes. Right. So let me tell you, though. OK, so back in the day, and some people might argue now that he wasn't like a libertarian, but he, for that time, Neil Bortz. Okay. Neil Bortz, I don't know if you know who he is. I know who he is. Guy. I couldn't tell you about his libertarian uh, Yeah, levels. no, he, he was actually right now, if we're going to mention Inside of Those Circles, uh, Andrew Wilkow does a thing on uh, XM Radio. And I, I know, know I know is. the name. Okay. He's very, very much more open to libertarianism. He, he mentions, he's like, he will... There will there will not be a single day where he's not talking about libertarians and not in a good way, not in a bad way. Right. He's like, hey, hey, what about libertarians? What they're thinking, and, and right. I think that he knows the game. I got to be a Republican, but I think really, right, there is some libertarianism. Right. So anyway, so Neil Bortz um, was a big advocate of the fair tax plan. Yep. Okay. So that was kind of a conduit for me. I'm kind of like, okay. So that kind of got me listening, and he plugged. He wrote the book, the fair tax plan. Right. Oh my goodness, I don't even like to read. But right. I read through all of that, and that was one of these. And he was very cool about it. I was like, hey, if you get to pass off somebody else, and so I kind of did. I, right. I didn't pass it off. Um, but I don't know how how open you are to the fair tax plan. I know libertarians say I don't uh, care about any of it. I, because... I have a I have an idea of what it's about. Okay. I haven't read the book. Uh, well, I've no, got no. it on my shelf. I should read. Yeah, it. Yeah, but it, it's small. I like it. So um, oh, that's not small. It's... Oh no, no, the one I had, the one that Neil Bortz oh. just it looks like our libertarian book. No, no, so, it's thicker than that. No, no, sure. but, but I got. okay, the premise of it, the premise of right. it, and without getting into all the weeds of it, okay, the premise is that uh, we pay taxes based on what we purchase. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, if you just leave it there. Guess what starts happening? Now, they've tried to say the argument has been that it's revenue neutral to the government. Right. I really don't think it is. In all honesty, just by consumption type tax, right. um, we they're going to have more money. Right. But it, now it's it, it's more kind of spread out to where taxes are right. because you pay taxes only on what you buy. Right. So if you're a billionaire who buys a $6 million yacht and parks it right down here on the river. Um, so if you right. do that. Not that that ever happens. No, never happens. Um, so if you do that, guess what? You've paid the equivalent to your amount of taxes because you bought something of higher scale. Um, if you go and buy an 88 Toyota Corolla and you paid 600 bucks, you paid the level accordingly. Right. So you paid taxes taxes 
based on what you purchase. Right. Um, I liked it because it gets rid of there. Let's the biggest complaint right now about taxes and like because you know how the government's lying to us saying oh we're just trying to go after the rich people the billionaires right, for their right. taxes that's a lie that's how okay, they always that, start that, yeah but that's a lie but it, it like, never ends that way now we could have that whole if that's a conversation it, we want to have it, it barely even starts that way but exactly. <clears throat> okay all right so on those lines let me okay this is all free <laughs> I always tell the church this is all free this is all free so here's what happened. So we did our taxes for last year because, you know, we're good citizens. Right. So we did our taxes and it looked like we were going to get about $600 back. Mm-hmm. You know, like that, I want to pay that back. Right, right. Um, so we're like, okay. And then they Your realized. Your loan without interest. Right, exactly. Um, and, and so the, we got the thing. We're like, okay, cool. $600, we're fine. And then we got a letter saying that because I guess we didn't realize we got one of those give outs, one of their handouts that they did during COVID. Okay. Okay. So then they sent us a thing saying we owed like $308. So I'm like, all right. And uh, so my wife takes care of all that type of stuff. And like I said, don't you pay that. I, I can't tell you. She goes, I got pay. I said, no, you're not going to pay that. I right. said, she goes, but they're going to. I said, you make them keep sending letters. Make right. Like, I'm sorry. Like, right. they're talking about it's all about millionaires and billionaires. And you're coming after me for $300. Right. After all the money you're giving out to everybody right. else right now, you're taking right. my money. You want $300 more right. from me. I kept telling don't do don't you do. And so she pushed off as long as she could. And then here's what happened. She got that letter. That one last letter says, we're about to go and garnish your wages because the power of the gun that they have. Right. So what does she say? I'm not going to have them go to my job and make this look bad. I said, you do that. And you just explain it. I said, because they're going to take it out one time or we're going to be done. But it, I'm, like, I'm like, you know what? I want them to have to do $500 worth of work to get $308 right. from us. Right. And, and so, but that's the premise of it is that they're right. taking, they say it's for this. Right. Now, that, I said that was all free. Now, back to the fair tax plan. Right. So what I like about it is that, because the, they complain that not everybody's paying their fair share of taxes. Right. Okay. So if you mm-hmm. take something like the fair tax plan, for example. Right. Okay. What it does is now any time, Anybody, anybody who purchases anything right. is now paying taxes. Right. So regardless of what you do for a living, you're now paying taxes, right. which means if you want to talk about illegal immigrants, okay, for right. example, they purchase something, they pay taxes. Uh, drug dealers, prostitutes, anything along those lines are right. stealing from the government, you know, by not giving them their money. Um, anything along those lines is now paying into this. Right. So if we wanted to really look at taxes realistically, if we can't jump full libertarian, go get rid of all of them, could something like this work? Maybe. Um, I think, you know, I think the uh, I tend to look at it and say the only time that something like a plan like that would work Mm -hmm. is if people were really in the mindset of saying, I need to limit the power of government. And if they're not already in that mindset, Mm -hmm. then I don't think it'll work because I think what will end up happening is they might say, we'll give it a try. You ever have somebody do something as a trial? They have an out. And and they've barely tried. Mm -hmm. And they're like. It didn't work. And you're like, you put half ass effort into it. Mm-hmm. And they're and they're like, but I tried and like, no. Did you though? You <laughs> didn't try. Right? Like you didn't really give it a go. And a lot of that, like you said, if there's a safety net, if there's a backup plan, then it's not is it really and, and trying, then the government right? still has that safety net. They're like, oh right. we'll just default back and, well, it doesn't really do anything and, here. And and I think it's um like could it work? Maybe, but I think it'll only work if we're diligent. I think the other thing that it would require I think people have to really understand the libertarian perspective on taxes. And we have that saying, you know, taxation is theft. And it really kind of jars people. It used to jar me a little bit. Right. And um, here's how I explained it to some women once I, I, I was at a um, uh, I was at a town hall here mm-hmm. in Jacksonville. And I used that phrase when I gave my my two minutes or whatever, you know, whatever right. timeline time that I had. And then two women happened to come up to me and talk to me about it. And they were like, so what group are you with? And I was like, well, the Libertarian Party. Uh, they had like, never even heard of it. Like, <laughs> like what? What are we t- like, like, wow, okay. Yeah, but um, that's painful. You know, right. Like, First largest really... party, but dude, never heard of you. All right. Right. They were like, what? Well, you ever hear yeah. of Wendy's? Right. Because <laughs> you and, got McDonald's and Burger King, but right. you never heard of Wendy's? Right. Wendy's is really going to... Like, Wendy's, gonna... is it Libertarians of fast food? I, no, I'm, I don't know. I just know that... No, it... I think this should be our argument. Oh, I, boy. I, I, that's not your point. If they hear this, they're going to they're gonna take me to task on Twitter because they're good at that. But oh, anyway... Hold on, hold on. Before that's I let the... you continue, what do you mean they're going to take you to task? Oh, have you seen their Twitter? No, no, Ooh, no, 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 Twitter. So Wendy's, when they're on Twitter, they have some really just great responses to people. I mean, oh. at, I'll have to send you some. I'll send okay, you some. Okay, so... They're, so they're, Whoever they got running their social media is sharp. So I want I'll everybody to understand and whoever's watching, wherever you put it, Told them that the third make sure, make sure that oh, let's be honest. Well, they're the third less known. 
Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got sure. McDonald's. Everybody knows McDonald's and Burger King. Can you King. kick the shovel back over there? <laughs> and so I, I'm not on Twitter. So 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 on side of that, we are now the libertarians. Wendy's is the libertarians of fast food. Continue. Okay. <laughs> The two um, ladies did not know who the libertarians right, were. Right. Okay. So they All didn't right. know who was, they didn't know the libertarians, but they also didn't know about this whole taxation and stuff. And they're like, so what did you say about taxes again? And so I said taxation. Did you say just like that, by the way? They did. Just they're like, like that. Ah, it I was hope very they watch false this. I hope, I hope right? they watch this. Yeah, I hope so okay. too. Okay. Um, so then I had an opportunity to so now I just told them. I'm like, yeah, I said earlier taxation stuff. So now I'm like, I gotta explain to these people because I can't just, you can leave, just leave that, that one. Right. right. Like, what does that mean to mm-hmm. somebody that doesn't already believe it, right? So there's three of us. So here's what I said. <clears throat> cleared my throat. That I was did. very nice. I did. Yeah, I cleared my throat too. I was like, well, right, here. well, ladies. So I was like, I pop my collar here real quick. Uh, so I said to him, I said, there's three of us here. If two of us vote to raise taxes, I said, one person, that one person who voted no, I said, they're having their money taken from them. Yep. And I said, every single time, I said, that's why it's theft. Taxation is always theft with one exception. If every single person agrees and guess what that is the only time and as long as you have any libertarian involved not going to agree so guess what not everybody's in agreement so Wendy's is not always going to be in line with this they they you could like i feel like they're the look on their face was like oh oh that's interesting did they agree probably not but no but i think it starts i think that's because here's the thing is unfortunately we've been trained yeah we we, let's let's just be honest not going anti well maybe I'm a little anti government. Sure, sure. It's a, but they just train you. This is right. what we do. This is how we do it. Right. Um, we don't question it. We just right. And, and, and haven't you learned that kind of reading through things and kind of coming mm-hmm. to your own thinking as you get a little bit older, you start going, you know what? Wait a minute. What? What? Why do I believe this? Like, right. why we start asking why? Right. You know, I've often said that little kids, you know, little little kids, so they start talking to four or five. They're like, why? Why? Like, and right. you're just like, shut up! Like, just right. stop. And right. I go, wait a minute. As adults, we have lost our minds. Yeah. The kids had it right. Yeah. Because we stopped asking why. Yeah. And, and so when we start asking why, you get these people start asking why. Right. Why do we pay taxes for this? Why are right. these type of things? Why? Right. And then all of a sudden they start. I, I think that as adults we start thinking. We go, wait a minute. Why are we? Right. And, and you know what I think? In all honesty. And this is one of the topics of that. The reason why I, I think I like libertarianism, I, I'm a guy who weighs into common sense pretty heavily. I'm right. not the smartest guy around, but I kind of go, it seems pretty sure, simple. Sure. And, and, and I think there's a lot of libertarian thinking, even and, and maybe even especially on taxes, that we go, this is pretty simple. Why are we do? you know, why is it right. go like this? And I think the more that we can just get people to go, why? So right. I think what you yeah. did there that night was to take something that in our circles, taxation right. is a step. We go, and if it's on Facebook, oh, that's right. And we'll right. like it and go about our business. Um, but maybe we don't get a chance to explain right. it enough. And I think that you did a great job then, that you were able to Thank take you. that. Crap, I just said that on there. Edit that part out. So, so uh, that's, but, gonna be, that's gonna be part of the promo for the episode. <laughs> uh, so inside, you did a great job there. That's it. Done. <laughs> you guys had a really short week this week, didn't you? Yep, thirteen <laughs> seconds. So, but I, I think that I think you did the right thing. Just get it out there. Let it be known. It's on record. Yeah. Now. Let me explain it to you. Right. And, and I think that unfortunately, maybe even as libertarians, we don't do that well. We right. stay inside of our circle. We all yeah. understand it. Yep. But I think that we, well, we been... use internal language jargon, you know, or like, oh, well, no, no matter, no matter taxation is theft because, blah, blah. And, and it's like, no, explain, explain it, you know, why. explain like yes. that Reddit subreddit, you know, explain it like I'm five, you know, literally explain it. Like, why would, why is it theft? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's theft because somebody is always saying no. Yep. And we've asked them like, like what? What else can it be? If I said, Pastor Tub, will you agree to pay this much money to this group? No, no, I'm taking it anyway. What else can That's, it be other than and, and theft? The, and the, and right, exactly. And Doesn't matter the, what good it the, might do. Two, maybe there's the problem. If we're lucky, is that we don't we don't have the option to say right. Like, like once again, if you give people the option to say, what are you willing to put your tax towards? Right. Okay, man. I tell you what, things would change. But I think that in, in all honesty, there might be a level of people who go, I want emergency, I want roads. I, right. I, I bet you there would probably be some form of benevolence. Right. They want a certain level of the amount that says, right. let's help the homeless. Let's right. like, because if you look now. Now, I'm a guy who used to always be like, if they're homeless, they got what they got. They made bad decisions. And I, right. I was kind of heartless about them. Right. Okay, Jesus kind of changed that side of me a little bit. And, and so, but I started kind of seeing them different. And then, you know what I realized? There's a lot of people right. who truly care about the homeless. Right. Now, the problem is government cares about the homeless when it's a good stand for them. Oh, right. we got to do something about the homeless. And all you really want to do is shift them out of town when there's a big right. game coming to town. Right. Um, but as a whole, people want to help. 
Right. And so I think that if you kept some form of, okay, roads, emergency services, and I call it benevolence. Is right. If there's a, a need for others. But that need for others is not a multi-million, right. billion dollar corporation. Right. That need for others is, you know what, the woman who, single mom who lost right. her job. Like, those are real things. Yeah. And I think it makes the conversation easier. I think this is where, and, and libertarians will disagree with me, and that's fine. No they're, way. They're allowed to be wrong, right? <laughs> um, but I think it makes the conversation a little easier if you say, okay, in my mind, I am envisioning a world where there are no taxes, right? Like taxes in the sense that the government yep. is imposing mm-hmm. this tax, right? Not, you know, it wouldn't be redefined in any way. Right. It literally it's be, just there's, it's, it's not just, happening. It exist, my check right? is my check. I take every bit In my those. mind. Okay. But now I'm talking to this person who's a non-libertarian and they're like, well, what about the roads and, and the homeless people? And, and, you know, if I say, okay. So wait a minute. Here's here's what I got in my mind, but I know that they're not ready for that. They're yet. not ready for. Hey, how are your roads so, and homeless right now? <laughs> so so then I say, all right, let's talk about the things that you absolutely got to have. Mm-hmm. And then let's say we narrow it down to a list of like I don't know ten items, right? So now I'm talking to this liber- this non libertarian. Mm-hmm. They've agreed that man, these ten items we just we, we got to have these. We yep. can't let go. Mm-hmm. And so then I say, all right, will you join me in fighting against these other the taxes, other stuff, mm-hmm. right? Because that's how. Because here's what happens. Even though it's not what I really wanted, um, when I get them to f- uh, agree to fight against something, anything, it doesn't matter. Even if it's one tax, yes. I get you to agree to fight with me, and then I get this other person, this other person, and I get this group of people. Now it's not just libertarians fighting. It's non-libertarians that yep. are saying, hey, you know, we realize that maybe we can get rid of this tax. Then what happens they see that you know what that one there's something there. wasn't so bad. Well, what's what's next? Do I maybe have this 10. one's not I, so I, bad? There's either. these ten. Can we make that nine? Right. And if we got to the point where we're paying for roads, emergency services, and I don't know the military, let's just say that, right? Let's say we get to that point mm-hmm. where that is the where we're paying taxes for. We have literally primed society to be prepared to even remove those. Yeah. Because once they again, are ready that, now. Because they're that, like, well. Hell, all this other stuff works. You know what's funny is that it's, it sounds, once again, it sounds so simple. Give people, or I shouldn't say that. No, I mean, let people keep more of their money. Right. And then you watch how they're more willing to help right. others. You see, like, there's certain there's certain groups online and stuff, and we do things with church and stuff that we want to help these groups. And we want, like, we want right. to help. People do, man. But, but how many times, uh, am I, I think I can mention, like, there's a voluntary, right, very voluntarism in action. It, mm-hmm. It's on Facebook. That's how I kind of see how I follow okay. the things. And there are different times I go, oh, man, like, I would love to, but, you know, we're trying to help this family at the church, or we're trying to do these other right. things. And, and because government just keeps taking, you know, when you add in inflation and everything else, and it just seems like we have less right. of our own anyway. Right. And as government keeps taking and wasting it and stuff, guess what? Now we don't have the means to help the others, right. which now makes government go, well, you can't help them, so I'm going right. to, which keeps that whole thing going. Right. But I found that when people have a li- even just a little bit more, how much willing they are oh, yeah. to help others. I think people want to help I think so. be benevolent to other people. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's I, th- I th- you know, there are some that wouldn't. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's... But I think largely you're going to find that most people want to help. And I think that the the idea is just to really get people to understand, okay, like one, let's separate what taxation is uh, away from the, the uh, what we think the result is. The result may be a great thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like the idea of helping the homeless is a great thing. Yes. The idea of helping single moms who um, are struggling. Are trying. Like they're trying. Yep. That is a good thing. Yep. We need to separate that and say, look, taxation is one thing. Mm-hmm. It is a theft, even if it's going for something that we it's believe is good. good. Mm-hmm. So now that we've separated those two and if we can get someone to agree, then we can say, all right, let's now talk about the bare minimum. What are the things that you just can't live without? Mm-hmm. You know, can we, can we, do, do we have to tax everything? And I think the answer to that well, is to point out how much more genuine the interaction is with people. Mm-hmm. Because I can't think of anybody that's got online or ever, you know, they're like, man, I was down and out. And all those people at the welfare office were so super duper great. I'm sure it happens, right? Like, like I'm, I'm not saying that welfare, people that work at the welfare office are mean. What I'm saying is, they're there to do a they're job, the cog. and they're yeah. not necessarily invested themselves. Right. If you help me, you are invested in me, mm-hmm. and then we've we and hear I'm stories. more involved in helping right. you keep. And, now, and he, we he, hear stories all the time. Think, like, man, think if it weren't you, for Pastor Tub, 
No, you, you never know. hear that. Trust me, you never hear that. Uh, but but here's what you're saying, and then what you're saying it leads down the road of this right. is how we can make it less. Okay, use the example of the single mom who lost her job, and we start saying, okay, listen, let's intentionally help these ones. Right now, maybe we put deadlines on it, like if right. we're going to do this for six months or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but then you start saying, hey, listen, can we agree that maybe the single mom doesn't have to live in a two thousand dollar a month apartment? Right. Maybe she can live in a Fourteen hundred dollar a month apartment. Right. That we and, and guess what you just did. You kind of started saying okay. Right. Like because let's be honest, there are people who live off of the government, and they're doing better than the people who work. Right. And we're seeing a lot of that go on with all the restrictions right. and everything, lockdowns and stuff. Right. So you know what that makes people do? It makes them get mad. Right. Because now government's taking it from me to give it to somebody right. who really doesn't care. Because we have no control. Right. Government wants right. the votes and government wants government. Right. So I think that once... And I we... think control is a big... I think that's. I think you nailed something there um, that's really, really important because um, I've said this before. When you give money to somebody, if I give you... If you tell me, hey, DL, I'm having down and out and I, I could use 200 bucks and then I give you 200 bucks and Wait, then are you, you come are you back... Are you saying you would? Uh, I, I don't know, but I'm oh, just, right. you know, like, continue then. <laughs> check to see, I'm checking this, this, this hypothetical. Well, I'm to see what week I come in and go, you know, right. DL. This hypothetical. Really down on my luck. <laughs> and uh, so then like two weeks later, you come back and you want, you know, another $200. Mm -hmm. I might begrudgingly give it to him. Like, dude, what happened to the $200? Yep. Well, I tried, blah, blah, Okay, one more time. But what happens is I quickly, and, and this happens all the time, I quickly get frustrated with you. That's what you're just talking about, like put a limit on it. But yes. Know? And but that doesn't necessarily happen with government. No, say. no, there that right? does not happen with like, government. You don't have this mechanism where somebody says, I mean, there might be some, I mean, I'm not gonna say there's none. It's not the same. It is not the same where an individual holds you accountable, accountable. and says, Hey man, what'd you do with that two hundred dollars that you're asking me for another two hundred dollars? This is not acceptable, you know, and then you uh, and, and so you're so, saying that the first two hundred I asked from you. Is, is totally golden. Sweet. The second right. one, I'm going to be questioning. And the third time, uh, I better you see some results. No. Yeah, right? You might even say no. Right? You might be like, you know what? I, I can't and, do this. And I might say no. And I might say, you know what? I tell you what. You go figure something else out and you come back in a month and we'll talk. And, you know, and, and I think that lesson reminds people mm -hmm. that, hey, I need to be a wise steward of what this thing, that, this thing that's being given to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that. I've worked with a lot of people that are on uh, social, uh, not social, but on um, assistance, mm -hmm. and they're not always wise with it. No. And, and, and part of it's ignorance. I don't want to make it out like they're all maliciously just going out gambling per se. I mean, I'm not saying that. But but they don't have, to be honest with you, they've never been forced into a position where they right. have to make wise choices. Right. Because it just kind of and, shows its way again. And, 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 and I feel like that part of that is because you've got this government entity, which is just comparatively here, a cold, about it. faceless entity yep, don't make smart that is helping you. Um, and then creates these additional boundaries that doesn't really empower you like you were talking yeah, about at so the do beginning. You, do you think our first lesson to really get this point then, this point across, is to start kind of really explaining it to people? Because I, I don't think I, I don't think a lot of people understand government doesn't produce anything. Right. So do you think that maybe we have to start coming to the point where you start saying, hey, listen, you understand that every time you take something from the government financially, in this case, that every time you financially take some form of assistance from the government, you're taking that from somebody else. Right. You're taking it from me and my right. kids. And like maybe I don't think because you just said it, because there's this faceless entity of government. Right. Oh, who cares? Government. Right. No, no. Government's stealing that from somebody. Right. And, there's and, the, and, yeah, and, 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 and I thing. and I yeah, and I and I think all of it has to be in there. But I think we have to be judicious when we point out what. You know, if if somebody's like, hey. Um, you know, I, I, I think we should help out single moms. Probably my go-to isn't just to be like, no, taxation is theft. <laughs> right. No, no, I need to be judicious. I've got all these different components to the conversation here. And I need to say which component that I need to talk about is going to get this person to the next component. You know, but here's the good thing about that. That's cut you off. But here's the good thing about that is if we have a little bit of our own money, we start giving to different right. organizations. Here's what we're able to do. Right. When that single mom comes to any of us, you know, or whoever, and they can go, oh, hey, wait a minute. I know three agencies that you can go talk to. Right. People have had extra money because you come the time of year now, people are always generous with their money and stuff. And, and so you can kind of go, hey, we can send you to these three places and these three places will help you because those places already exist. Right. They're already there. Right. And the problem is, is that government is not trying to send people to those places. Right. They want to just keep control right. of them. Right. And I, and I think that's um, th that ultimately the conversation needs to boil down to we know all the different components that are involved in the taxes. And mm -hmm. if it, you know, we've been talking about like social assistance at the, yes, at, at that's the moment. Kinda, yeah. But taxes span a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. So we have to be wise and we have to be 
um, you know, familiar with a lot of different topics. And so we need to have this basket full of eggs and this, all these eggs are the conversation on, um, we'll on just... taxation. And when I meet somebody and they're like, well, what about this issue that I'm having? I say, okay, well, that's, this that's this egg. egg. Let's take this one. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to choose the right egg to have a conversation mm-hmm. with them. Right. And then that egg. It's a weird analogy, you're but keep, whatever. No, you're too far into that it now. Is, I know, you, right? I'm, I'm stuck. You, you walk down this road, you got to finish right. it. So that egg tells, it, it, and once I, once we, um, once we have that conversation, mm-hmm. once they get, they understand that egg, they're ready for another egg. Mm-hmm. Which egg is that? I don't know. I need to find the right one. Right. And we just continually do it until this person gets to the point where they say, "You know what? I think you're right. There is an issue with taxes. Whatever that." And then that's they the get start. There. Right. That's the start of it. Like right. we don't expect right. everybody that as soon as you have this one conversation with them, they're gonna go, libertarians are right, they're exactly right. no, that's not going to happen. Right, right. But the, but if you can just start them thinking yep. about, wait a minute, they are taking from me, that doesn't seem right, and they are giving it to places that right. I don't agree with. Right. Wait a minute, how do we do something about this? Right. That's step one. Right. And I think that I think that maybe even as libertarians, what we struggle with is we know, like I think we really know this is the best plan. Yes. But we don't want to take the steps. We want to go from nothing to all of it. Right. And we have to learn, you know what, let's get into step five and step right. six that we have to, that we can get right. our way there, but we can't do it in such a way like, you're an idiot. Right. Why don't you understand this? Right. Well, you, you, you're you you're misled. You're yeah, misinformed. Well, and let's try to move you down the right road. I used to think this idea of, okay, we're going to go from paying tons of taxes to paying zero taxes is not going to happen, right? Like it just can't physically happen. And in a way, I still believe that, but for a different reason. The reason that it won't happen is not because the ideas are insufficient or we need to step ladder. It's because I have people that are going to be obstructing that path. Yes. And I've got to work with those people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we need to start having, you know, a better conversation. And so hopefully, and we're out of time for this. Yes, you are. I was going to say, I think you need to wrap up this section. Yeah. So, so we're out of time for this. So hopefully as you are listening, you learned a lot of things on, um, if you're, again, if you're a non-libertarian, hopefully you learn some things where like, Hey, you know what? That makes sense. I get it. I understand where you libertarians are coming from now. And, um, and, and when you talk to a libertarian, hopefully you have thought ahead of time, you know what, here are the things that I want to talk to a libertarian mm-hmm. about. Let me, let me just, let me narrow it down to let these. Let me find one of these freaks. And if you're a libertarian, hopefully you have realized like, Hey, you know what? There are so many components to just the taxes conversation mm-hmm. that I need to be prepared to talk to any one of those components at a time or what I was calling eggs a moment ago. Yeah. So final word no. before we close up. So I, I think that what we have to do is I think we, if we believe in what we believe, which I think we do, we, we have to just be better presenters of it. We have okay. to understand that uh, that this government taking taxes, it's stealing from somebody. Right. It might not steal it from everybody every time, but it's stealing from somebody at all times. Right. And so I think that the more that we can just have the conversations and kind of say, hey, guys, I think there's a way to attack this, that we can realize that maybe the government isn't making the best use of your money. Yep. And we can go from there. Yep. Libertarians on 25. But I know I'll be a law someday. At least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. So the bill review is intended just to talk a little bit about a bill. We're not going to dive into the weeds. Neither one of us are lawyers. And the idea, the purpose of it is to just encourage people. I'm not, I don't think you're a lawyer, uh, right? No, no. You just assumed you okay. like you make it sound like only lawyers are the smart ones who well, can figure this I stuff mean, out. I'd, Forget it. So what you're saying is uh, you're basically we're two idiots and can, we're going to talk about this. Can a pastor be a lawyer? I mean, I guess. <laughs> just so. kidding. I mean, no. So what we're going to do? I we're going you know, to we're going to we're going to talk about this bill and the whole purpose of talking about the bill is just simply to encourage people to start looking at them and say, hey, what are our representatives doing? What are they passing? And do I like it or do I uh, do I not? And maybe you like the whole thing. Maybe you hate the whole thing. Maybe you like bits and pieces because of it. Because you're on those lines without getting into this yet. Um, it's funny that government does so many things that we don't ever know about. Right. Yeah, like we we hear about the big things or the things they really right. want us to know about. Right. And sometimes I think that sometimes here's look at this. So you're not yep. looking at this. Right. This is a perfect example. I think you bringing these out right. really kind of helps. Right. And then the idea is, you know, maybe through us talking about it, that'll generate some ideas that when you start looking at some of these things, when you see them in the news, you can say, well, wait a minute. What about this? I right? remember these two idiots sitting at a table yeah, talking. What, what and that one idiot. Those two clowns. They came up with short something. One. I don't know. <laughs> but um, so today we're talking about Ohio. Uh, Ohio has got a bill. It is, let's see, Senate Bill number 156, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, Senate yes. Bill 156. 
And so the Senate has passed this. I don't know where it sits at the current moment. And I'm reading from a headline here, and I'll post the head. I'll post the news article in the show notes so that you can read it yourself. And I'll also post a link to the bill if you uh, should. So nobody choose. cares about it. Listen, you want to talk in this particular people. case? Just, I don't article, think we'll have to get into. I'm going to tell you now. Read the article because I did yeah. both, and the article is yeah. just it yeah. just give me what I need to know. Yeah, in this particular case, you're going to get enough for, from the article. Yes. So the title, uh, the headline goes: Senate b- uh, passes bill blocking cities from limiting concealed knife carry. So this is in Ohio. So let me just kind of uh, last year, lawmakers passed the legislation allowing Ohioans to carry um, an array of concealed non-firearm weapons like butterfly knives, switchblades, spring blades, and billy clubs. That's not really a knife. Um, yeah. Okay. Go and ahead. then yeah, on Wednesday, the Senate passed legislation ensuring that Ohio's cities don't try to pass legislation on the local level that would limit this new newfound right that's that's okay that's the media for you newfound right mm-hmm. your newfound right we didn't know you had this right weapon. we like, wow. just realized that you have freedoms yeah they were so what happened they, was, they gave the, us a freedom hey right. we just realized we can give you this freedom as they Thank were you. outside taking a look walking through the woods they're like they trip over something they're like, like what is that I wish I had... oh wow look it's a newfound right, right. I found there this like, holy wow it's like, been here all over we haven't been to this part right. of the woods yet go ahead I'm sorry so, no free. we're good so I don't think that I Tub's going to help uh, to help direct where this goes. I don't think it's going to go into determining whether or not carrying a weapon is a right. From In my perspective, whether you carry a butterfly knife, a billy club, or a <laughs> firearm, you have the right. Because you have the right to defend yourself with whatever means that you have available or that you choose to have available. Uh, some people may not want to carry a gun, but they'll be okay with you know carrying a baseball bat now, now real quick i want to add to like something that you just said that you have the right to defend um I, sometimes I, I carry my gun with me not to defend but to kind of prevent sure meaning i let people know i have it right so it's not about defense it's about hey i'm preventing something right so so i i always i always want to tell people because yeah. everybody think because they'll go to well do you need this to defend yourself okay well, we're not talking about defense we're not talking about preventing okay the more that i have the more i can prevent right the more they go whoa yeah, that's fair. With him. that's fair. Okay, and, and I'm not limited no, 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 to this fine. idea no, no. of defense. I just no, no. that's that's just the language no, but I that I use. No, no, I, I think we're good. All right, so inside of this, um, I, the the couple notes that I have, um, one is that I'm a gun guy, so I'm like, okay, I I I don't care about carrying a knife, right? But so, but I, but here's what I did look at. Um, I I I, I don't think that this is necessarily a knife carrying issue that it's talking about. There's a couple of things in my mind, um, because we it mentions inside the article of home rule, right? Now, home rule, for anybody who doesn't know, means that individual cities and vicinities and stuff along those lines can decide we govern ourselves. We right. can make laws. And Jacksonville is actually a home rule. Mm-hmm. So we ha- we can pass these laws even if they don't kind of align with what's going on statewide. And smarter people are just going to go, that's not exactly how it works. I- and I understand that. Right. So the complaint is, can the state limit the cities inside of a home rule state that says you can't do this? Right. I think that's where the problem becomes. Correct. Because now it's like we just keep passing our government up to the next level. And it, where is it? Right. Fine, and which is the problem we're dealing with. So I, I think that you have that. So that kind of makes it tricky when they start saying um, you have the right to make your own rules and govern your own people, but not really. Right. So I think that's part of the things along this one that I kind of struggle with. Um, also, there there's the idea um, what happens when you have something like this and then you leave that area. Mm-hmm. Like what happens when like city to city, different laws, different rules, you know, stuff along those lines right. makes it a little, okay, what do I do? And and I find this with carrying my firearm. Right. That I, I, I've i I've honestly said, and this is going to kind of fall into the area of, and let me explain it out for a second, um, that I, I've truly, if we're getting ready to go on vacation or something, I will truly sit down and figure out where I want to go right. based on where I can bring my gun with me. Yes. You, you know, so I'm like, well, if I go too far north, I can't. If I go too far west, I can't. I kind of want, I camp out here. Right. And, and, you know, there's a whole other reasons about why other states should get on board about thinking about that. But I'm more of a, a universal health, uh, health check. Look at that. Oh, a, you, Lord. Yeah, that's, this that is not just where we're at. It went a whole nother. Wow. I am more to a Woo. universal permit. <sighs> that it, 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 Found the socialist. There, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> in case, in case this is the first episode you watched. No, no, I think we're so past that. Uh, the fact I started with approving of guns, I'm already right. out. So, but what I'm getting at is that there should be a universal permit. Right. I don't think it should be state and city. I think it should be okay. We live in this country. Right. I have a concealed carry that's issued in Florida, and I don't mind if each state's kind of give their own. But I think I should be allowed to carry it 
anywhere right. in this country because Florida's issued me a permit to carry it. Right. Now, we can have the argument about should a state have to permit. I, 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 yeah, we can have yeah, that argument. That. Yeah. But as a whole, I'm down for a universal one. And, and I think that this could... This is kind lead... of a universal within the state. Yeah. Because it's saying, hey, we found this right mm -hmm. out in the found backyard. It. Yeah, we just sitting out there. We picked and it up. And so now we're going to give it to you. But we also want to make sure that different cities don't overrule us. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of tricky. I tend to think that when when we're talking about an actual right, mm -hmm. and, and this is this does get tricky because libertarians are like, I mean, we kind of tend to look at it like you either have a right or you don't, and the only time that you don't is when it's somebody else's right. So, exactly. Right? Yeah. It's basically, so, basically, when you say we don't have a right, I'm going to start asking questions. Right. Well, right. Because well, like, I don't have a right you know, to. do I do I have a right to have a car? Yes, I do because I have a right to do whatever I want with the money that I have mm -hmm. produced from the labor that I have used to acquire it. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, so it, it's very, very tricky, I think, because we, we look at it and say, you have a right to carry a, f a firearm. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Like, you should have a natural right before it's proven that you shouldn't. Right. It kind of goes the other way around. It's like, we have to prove first right. that we should, when it should be the other way around. I, I should be allowed to until you right. prove to me I can't. I think, ideally, that um, every city would effectively... Um, be governed by the same rules that the nas the nation is. Okay. And what I mean by that is a lot fewer rules. Like right. way, way fewer. Like okay. tiny. And down to the bare minimum of just these are your rights. However, that's not what we have set up. Mm -hmm. What we have set up is we have this federal government that says, all right, we have at the federal level identified certain things as these are your God-given rights like not that we're giving them to you, but th that these are. They're these already exist. there. Uh -huh. they, they exist. Mm -hmm. Our job is to protect them. And the only thing that we're not supposed to do is um, impede them. Right. And so we now. We call it the Constitution. Right. <laughs> so then you have the states that say, well, we can do different things. Um, taxes, since we were just talking about that, mm -hmm. might be one where the federal government has a certain limitation on taxes. The state has a little bit less limitation, and then maybe the the, the communities have even uh, less limitation. Right. Like they could, like you know, in theory, we're talking about. We're not talking about in practice. Right. And so I think um, uh, in that particular situation, the the situation that we're actually in, mm -hmm. I think there is a good value of saying yes that there are some situations where there's home rule, but there are also situations where you know a state or even the federal level could override that. Okay. And so I, it, it, but it, but it, I think it becomes a, um, I think it becomes a conversation of each one individually, right? Like we each have to, you know, not each, but we, we as society, we as uh, citizens have to okay. sit down and have that conversation and say, is this something that the state should have authority over, right? Should the state, in this case, have the authority to tell my local government that they can't ban butterfly knives, right? Um. And that really ends up being a question of, is my city allowed to ban? So, so right? as libertarians, would we be okay with the state saying, no cities, you cannot infringe upon their right to carry a knife? So we, I don't know. Me, yes. Okay. I would absolutely. So I agree with this legislation. Okay. I haven't, um, I, I, I don't necessarily, not, not, not necessarily the whole entire legislation. And, we, and if you happen to read it, you're going to find that it really just does a lot of replacing and adding. Yeah, it, 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 wasn't, really, it was nothing groundbreaking and, in this. And, and, and it only does that so that it can, you know, it might say remove firearm and just say weapon. So it, it makes it a little bit more broad so that it includes knives and, and, right. and other stabby things. Do they ever mention in there that, that and I don't remember seeing it in the article, but did, did you come across anything that was saying that they had to have some type of permit, permit for this or just they could just do it? Because um, Ohio's not in... It's on, uh, I, I'm not sure what their laws sure are, their but it, but it, it, my interpretation of this was that they were simply just saying, all right, in addition to firearms, mm -hmm. knives are now included. Okay. That was my impression. And I said, okay, I agree with that. One, it should be because I should have the choice that if I want to carry a firearm or if I want to carry a knife right. or a stick, whatever. Well, you know, well they give you the... Right, the billy club. They said I could carry a billy club, <laughs> uh -huh. right? And and it's up to me if I want. I mean, you know, I mean, we can have arguments on which one's more appropriate, but it's up to me at the end right. of the day. I, so I let decide. me ask you a question, because you brought this up. This is your this is your thing. Yeah, this is my, your baby. This, this is okay. My, uh, so what what were we looking to accomplish? What what is why are we discussing? This? So you I wanted me. to discuss this because I wanted to get your thoughts on the home rule okay. in this particular case. Okay. Because I feel like most libertarians would say, well, yeah. 
of course. But there would be other situations where libertarians would say, whoa, 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 that's a home rule and issue. There's the right? problem. And I think this is why my idea of saying we need to judge these on an individual basis is appropriate. Okay. Because we do not have the libertarian utopia society, right. however that's envisioned, right? What we have is this bicameral um, federal government with autonomous or, or sovereign states mm -hmm. and then cities within these states that have some level of autonomy of themselves. I think I described that fairly well, yeah, sure. right? So that's what we currently have, okay. which means that it's possible that a city could infringe upon your right and then you need to be able to have uh, then you have the state and maybe even the federal government that you can appeal to and say, hey, make them Listen uh, to respect me. my right. Mm -hmm. But but the problem is, is that once you – this is truly – I think you're right. It's topic by topic because right. this topic where – you know, if right. there are weapons, any type of weapons type of guy, you're like, oh, good. That's right. right. Don't let the city get in my way of what the state's saying I can right. do. Flip that. Make it a tax one. Right. And we're like, no, what are you talking about? And so right. I think that you're very right that we have to be cautious. But let me ask you a question. If we're looking at the bigger home rule, and I don't know if this is the thing that we wanted to get to, because this could take a long time. We, sure, we sure. We only have one. like a few minutes. Right. Here. And so I, I, I sometimes the, the, the home law, it, it causes issues. Right. Because it's like, okay, well, what can we do and what can we do? When right. can the state say, like, when does the state get to impede in, on that? And it's right. like, oh, no, 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 I know you have this, but not really. Right. Like, it, and so it walks down a whole nother road that I think that we bring it out here and I think that we're not going to cover it. I right. don't think we're going to cover it because this and, is supposed to be a right. short. It is. And and I think the, I think the answer is to say, um, what is the scope of responsibility? So if like Jacksonville here, we just had this six cent tax yes. that they added and I and it was a gas tax mm -hmm. um, and it's supposed to fund local infrastructure projects. Now, I disagree with it, but I do believe that is in the purview of home rule, right? Like right. this is like I would not expect the state to come to and say, oh, you can't do that. The, right. Or the federal government to come and say, but, you can't do but that. But I think I'm also, it's going to sound hard, but I think I'm better when, instead of just council, city council saying, this is how we're doing it. I like when, right. it, when the people get a chance to vote. Right. Now, I don't understand why people keep voting for more taxes. Like, I, I do we, you understand we, how we, we keep doing that? Yeah, Maybe that's the know. last section that we just right. did. Right, it was the last yeah, second. Like, we keep voting for more taxes. Right. And I go, wait a minute, but that's the type of thing that we have, is well, that we should I, have I, that right amongst us, right. separate from other counties and, and the state. And I think this is a good thing to bring up to i think when you have something that's an inherent right mm -hmm. that needs the protection um from top to bottom right? right and i don't mean that top down i just mean like um, throughout throughout mm -hmm. all, all throughout yeah and but then when you get into things where um it's specific to that um spe specific to that scope so if the city of jacksonville says well we want to build some bridges and we're going to tax people to build these bridges. Well, I think that would um, that's an appropriate thing. That's an appropriate conversation to have with city residents. Right. And it's not an appropriate that level. We don't need Tallahassee people, telling us. We don't need Tallahassee. We don't be, need people from Miami necessarily chiming in, mm -hmm. you know, not in, in terms of voting power. Right. Right. And um, but then if if the state wants to do something right, then the state then that's a conversation for the entire state. So like if Jacksonville were to say, well, we're going to tax people so that we can um send some additional money to the federal government for um, for military. No, absolutely not, right? No home rule it, there. It, it, right, I'm not, not giving you home rule. Because it's not staying here. It's, it's, right. Yeah, I think there's a premise of it's for here. Right. And as long as it's kind of, it, right. it's in our house. Right. It, and and so when these bills come across, uh, in as much as it pains me to say, like, you know, some things, uh, I, I, we have to learn for now with the society that we have mm -hmm. to delegate, when to delegate and when not to delegate. This, I think, was appropriately delegated to the state mm -hmm. for the state to say, look, this is a constitutional right to carry fire or to carry weapons. weapons. Mm -hmm. So therefore, cities know home rule doesn't apply to you in this case. Okay. If the city wants to say um, – now, if a municipal city wants to say no weapons in our local courthouse, I'm okay with that in the same way that I would be okay with you know, uh, Wendy's that we were talking about in the last segment. Mm -hmm. I would be okay with Wendy's. Um, legally speaking, be okay with Wendy saying nobody uh, that's carrying a firearm may enter our building, right? Legally speaking, I'll yeah, be, I, you I'll know what? Okay I, that. Right. This is how I go to those places. Right, right. So yeah, I got you. You don't, you don't respect certain, property rights. I got certain, you. There's a certain well-known restaurant in the area, not Wendy's. Wendy's is the libertarianism of fast foods, and so, um, so there's this well-known restaurant that 
libertarians like. And you know, like I've noticed that usually if you go, you look, there's a sign up on the building that says no firearms permitted. I mean, I think that's what it said. I couldn't tell. Oh. For, I, I couldn't tell specifically. I'm not familiar. Let's talk about this offline. Exactly. And, and so, but I kind of, all right, you know. Right. I, and the thing is, it's kind of, all right, fine. You know, I think those places right. have their right to say it. Now I can either. We've had this conversation about a number of things because right. lockdowns. You have a right to do that. Right. And, and, but that's fine. But um, but let me ask you a question. Then. On those same lines, can the city not implement and say, no, 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 no. We said, this is how it gets to go. You don't get right. to say that about your, it's like, do, do they get to go to business owners and go, we already covered this. You don't have a. You can't say no. They're allowed to do it. Uh, well, well, it depends on what it is, knives. right? If it's ty- if, if it's knives, I would say no. That they don't have home rule. Then applies to the business, right? So the business the property. Has lost their the, no, freedom no. of choosing. No, no, no. The, okay. The, the the business is allowed to say. Oh, okay. You think uh, the they have the, the right? I don't to say, say it loud. They have the right to say, "I do not want somebody to come in here with a firearm or a weapon." Right. Or they might be able to say, "The the weird contrary." I only want people to come in hey, here if they have if yeah, they're armed. You know what? Hey, right? they'll, Maybe they'll that get a certain clientele at that point. And and, and to me, that's kind of like this. Whole, that's like the microcosm of home rule, right? Because you just keep right. going smaller, it keeps going smaller, down smaller. and down and down. Mm-hmm. I have the right to decide. Hey, if somebody comes over to my house, I can say, Hey, look, please leave all your firearms in your car. Please do not bring them in my home. I have. Are you telling me? No. Oh, I just. I, I, but I have that right. Like right. Yes, I have the right. Yes, you do. So. So couldn't that extend to a business owner? Right, it's and it mine. extends to a business. This is business what I owner, want mm-hmm. uh, because. It all it all focuses on the scope of authority, right? Effectively, very good. You know what I always say? It's the enforcement of right. Who's and, going to enforce it? And it's not. It's imperfect. Mm-hmm. I will admit that it's in, this idea of home rule and all this. It's imperfect. But what I think when we have these kind of conversations about this, what I think it does is prime people to understand property rights. Yep. Right. And, and so yeah, that, that's where we yep. kick in. That's where yep. libertarians and, love to and, kick and, in. And, at. and, and yeah, I, and mm-hmm. that's why I think that. Even though it's it's an, it's it's you could even argue it's not uh, um, like this idea of home rule and the state you know making a mandate that cities can't do something has nothing to do with property rights per se. You could make that argument. I think what it does is I think the meta conversation mm-hmm. of it kind of brings us to this notion of like, hey, there is a situation where the property owner or the you know the, this this smaller entity mm-hmm. has that sole That's discretion right. mm-hmm. to decide, yep. right? And then there are times when they don't, right? So, like, if I go to your house, uh-huh. you have the right to decide if I come into your house. If you invite me in, you, that doesn't mean that you've necessarily got like the I right to, like, I invite you to bring your dog and it's going to bite my kid. Right. I invited you or, in. And... Or if you've invited me in and then you are just like, and then you just walk up and stab me with a shank, you don't have that right, oh. right? So, right. so I think I think this kind of that's conversation the of others, right? Let so me this ask conversation so it, primes it, people for that. Let's I think. Be, let's just if we do it, if we do it right, this must be the quick segment. Okay, okay. So real quick, then, if, how do far down the line does it go? Okay, does oh, an autonomous an autonomous employee can say, "Hey, I don't want to serve somebody who has a knife on them." Well, I think that it doesn't because. The unless the employee generally doesn't own the business, right? And they've generally um, made a contract with mm-hmm. their employer. I, I agree with you, uh-huh. right? And so if I go to work for Wendy's, I've agreed, and um, I have agreed to work and to serve a certain number of certain type of people, mm-hmm. everybody, everybody, right? I, I don't determine and that. Mm-hmm. and I don't have that right unless. Wendy's again. I don't know if we should be using Wendy's, but no, we're gonna we're gonna, we, we're gonna listen, slam me. We are going to make right, Wendy's yeah, I'm not, the libertarian I'm not editing this out. of the fast food. Oh, it's on so there. You, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm I might have. even tag them on Twitter and be like, "You guys got mentioned in my podcast." Oh, please, oh, please flame it's, me. It's on. I don't know. It's so, on. Okay, but um, you know, if if I were to go and work at Wendy's and mm-hmm. they were to say, "Okay, well, here are the types of people that you are permitted to not serve." Okay. That would be part of the contract, so therefore I would be permitted to do that. To, right. So right. It, what, what yeah. it just comes so, down so, to. So yeah, this whole conversation of in this particular case, we're not talking about the the bill itself and the wording and the language, which sometimes we'll do. In this particular case, it's kind of a broader conversation mm-hmm. on hey, what does it mean to delegate certain authority to certain entities? And I think that's a conversation that this one kind of. But for now, that's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. 
And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time, and I'm out.